Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is some late night gaming on the LG G3 at Value Electronics after hours. Amazing for them to let me stay and film after the store closes to be able to bring you some G3 gaming as we look at the brand new game optimizer that was introduced with the LG C1 and G1. To me, the optimizer is very important. As you see me go through the presets here, I love to be able to change the black level and the white point and also change the benchmarking. You can make the image look pretty much any way you want it to look. You have new features that give you dark room uh, preferences. This new multi-view feature here, which I'm not going to really show you how to use it as I'm not connected, but you can do Netflix or YouTube while you game. Pretty cool feature. Some of you may use that for walkthroughs. The benchmarking here is actually pretty accurate if you compare it to PC benchmarking. It is pretty cool. And showing you here the dark room, again, which is needed, the G3 is that bright. What I love about the gaming optimizer these days is you are able to do so much of it on the main blade. You don't have to go into the advanced picture settings like you did with the C1, even though they actually updated the C1 to make it a little bit more like this. You have your G-Sync, your Free Sync, your Auto Low Latency Modes, Menu Color. But again, my favorite thing is to be able to change dynamic tone mapping here in the game the game bar instead of going into advanced picture settings so you can see what it does on the fly as you see here i like using the game optimizer or i should say the black stabilizer to give me more contrast the g3 is very bright but for the points of this video i'll be leaving it as is as well as leaving the camera to iso instead of leaving it at automatic the more i try to give it a deeper look you'll lose brightness. So there's times where it may look washed out. Trust me when I tell you it is not washed out. It is very colorful and it is very vibrant. As you see me toggle HGIG and dynamic tone mapping, in the past I preferred dynamic tone mapping simply because it was a brighter, more vibrant image. Off was just kind of muddy and HGIG just wasn't always supported and it wasn't very bright. However, it's come a long way with these brighter OLEDs I'm telling you, HIG is the way to fly, as it only brightens what needs to be bright. It creates contrast, and those specular highlights really pop. For most of this video, you'll see HGIG implemented here. And I'll go back and forth. But the access to the menus right there on the fly is such a gift. Look how beautiful that looks. This is Horizon Forbidden West. What a beautiful game. But I'll actually show you Horizon Zero Dawn later, which has one scene that I absolutely love. But here we go into the picture settings that used to be reserved for outside. Though the C2 and G2 introduced this, it's further refined here. AI Picture Pro sound settings. If you look at the sound feature here, you're able to change all that here in the main blade, which is very cool. And as I mentioned, I love the benchmarking tool, which is actually pretty accurate. But you'll notice it more on PC because it will flutter and change. VRR, G-Sync, FreeSync, a auto low latency mode is also here. I love with these manufacturers that gaming is becoming such a priority. Look how beautiful the specular highlights are. Now, for the majority of this video, we'll be staying at a relatively cool picture mode until I warm it up with God of War. Here we are with Returnal. What I love about Returnal is the specular highlights here. Now, I am showing you a little bit of a deeper image here, the black stabilizer, how you can alter it. Now, it may look a little crushed on camera in a minute. I'll show you how it looks without it but just showing you how you can make this image however you like and still have that pop. You can see the specular highlights, the explosions, the vibrancy. 
And as that we move into it in its standard preset here, how bright and blindingly bright that is. Now, a lot of the games in the PS5 have a watercolor look to them. A lot of games have this aesthetic. And I'll revisit this again with the Series X and my PC, as we'll be coming back and checking out the 77-inch and the 83-inch when that releases. 83-inch will not have the micro lens array, but it will be brighter than the G2. So we'll still check it out, obviously. Returnals is a great game. Has a bluish tint to it. But again, OLEDs do appear cool on camera. Move over to Dirt 5. Now, Dirt 5 is another game. Looks fantastic. Can look washed out on anything because it has a sunburnt kind of look to it. Or should say sun-drenched look to it. But it's still important to show you how the skybox isn't washed out. You do have these specular highlights there. And this is a very bright map. But I felt like the majority of the time filming the G3 that I was filming in LED with amazing contrast. As we move into a darker map with some weather conditions, you can see it come back. I know it's a gray sky, but you still see the clouds there. Really beautiful. Now, I'm a bit of a PC snob, so a lot of the current games you're probably looking for in this video are on my PC. I do have a 4090, and it's a little hard to go back to console, but console is just easier to show you uh, how it would perform for a lot of you guys that are on consoles. Special thanks to Robert and Wendy Zone of Value Electronics for everything they do and allowing me to film this in their location. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below. Let them know that I sent you. They will take amazing care of you. Here is Spider-Man, one of the best looking games of all time as far as I'm concerned. One of the few games on the list that I've beaten here. What's cool about where I am at is a little different time of day. So the shadows may look a little bit dark, but I love that contrast. I love how beautiful it looks. Now I'll come back and also show you different presets of how I prefer the game uh, picture modes, but I don't want to do that here. I want to show you how it would look pretty much out of the box for you. And again, not messing with the camera at all. I could deepen this, but I would lose the brightness for you, and I want to be able to show you how bright it is. Really amazing. Really beautiful. So impressed with the G3. What's so funny is I get these comments, well, you love everything. Well, I mean, honestly, guys, a lot of the TVs that I do spend time with are the highest end of the top three or four manufacturers, so it's pretty hard to dislike them. They're all pretty freaking cool, especially these OLEDs. Wow, look at that. Amazing. Now, God of War, admittedly enough, God of War, Rag or, yeah, this is Ragnarok. I've only gotten this far in the game, have not had a lot of time to play. This is where the image has been warmed up a bit and still looks rather blue. Again, that is just the camera, guys. OLEDs always push blue. Been saying that for many, many years. We can see the specular highlights and how the lights pop here. What's interesting with OLED's HDR impact for me many years ago was just a perceptual brightness. It looked like the brightness was painted on. It was just, again, your perception. Now that brightness is really there, and it does get you blinded the way LEDs typically do. But you still have the contrast ratio. Moving quickly into some SDR gaming from Street Fighter. Very colorful, very fast, very detailed. Looks fantastic. Looking forward to the sequel of Street Fighter and Tekken if you're a fighting fan. This is a non-HDR, and actually what's amazing about Street Fighter is this wasn't, I don't think this was actually upgraded for the PS5. Still looks great. But I want to be able to bring you SDR as well. And the game optimizer still works for SDR. But what I found is going through all these games, I really didn't have to change much. They all looked really good. 
and probably something that you could change just in the in-game brightness settings. I didn't calibrate each game's uh, calibration settings for the point of this video. And what's crazy too is a lot of games now are HDR, especially for all of you guys on console or most of you guys on console, a lot of H auto HDR features. And on Windows 11, there's an auto HDR, though a lot of us on PC like to stay with SDR for our older titles. But really, really beautiful. And again, as I mentioned, you know, it, was, it wasn't that long ago where input lag was high on TVs and gaming was an afterthought. Companies like LG and Samsung have really put gaming first, and all the other companies have also followed. And having it on all their models. As we go into Days Gone, another gorgeous game. Showing you here as I shoot this propane tank. You're not going to see a lot of violence in these game footage. YouTube has been pretty strict with that. So you're not going to see a lot of that in the, this video anyway. But it does look beautiful. As we move up and shoot this propane tank here, you can see the pop from the flames. Turn around here and boom. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys game on? Do you guys game on consoles? If so, which console? Um, I have to revisit this on PC to be able to show you 444 Chroma to see if certain features are locked out. When you do enable PC um, on the input, sometimes it locks you out of certain features. 60 fps what but again showing you here dynamic tone mapping hcig how it changes the image the g3 is really that bright where hcig i think for me is a must but again you can also achieve something similar if you want to do the black stabilizer and change the image to your liking But HCIG, when it's done right and it's supported, it's really amazing because in many ways, HCIG is a brighter in the places that it needs to be, which is what it's all about. Not washing it out, not making everything bright. Because sometimes when everything is bright, it comes off like a dynamic contrast, and that's not what we want. What we want is the things that are supposed to pop, pop. That's why in the clouds, you see more detail. Showing you that here again. I apologize if you hear my wife talking in the other room. This working from home thing is still happening. And here we go, showing you HIG. Quickly showing you some of And there's the advanced picture settings you can jump into. And that's how you get out. And then you can go into the other features. Pretty hazy here. And I move into Ghost of Shishima, which is absolutely stunning. Now, I've gotten farther in this game, but I want to go into the intro part to just show you the specular highlights. And just looks incredible. Everything pops. Everything just looks so amazing. Look at all the explosions, the flames. Now, the G3 that I have here, this sample was updated right out of the box. So I didn't have any issues with any dimming before anybody asked. I should have said that very early on in the video. And there are plenty of times in this video where I'm just staring at the sun. I stared at the sun and it didn't dim on me. I don't have any pink tint or any uniformity problems. That was problematic a lot in the 65-inch last year, the Evo panel. Um, don't see that here this year. At least not my sample that I have here in the store. But very clean, very dynamic. 
But the trade-off was always, again, LEDs for specular highlights, contrast for OLEDs. We're getting to that point now where you don't have to really make that compromise. OLEDs are going to get you there. Gorgeous. Awesome game, too. Actually waiting for this on PC as well. Again, guys, what do you think? Are you guys looking at the QD OLEDs, the S95C, the A95L, the G3? Are you looking at the C3? The C3 will also be brighter. It does have the Pixel Boost technology, which will increase the APL, so you'll see a brightness difference from the C2. As we look at Ratchet and Clank, and I love going into these games. Again, these are ones I've seen on many different displays, LEDs as well. And seeing this pop, as I mentioned to you before, OLEDs, though they always had pop, there was a part where it felt like it was painted on. It didn't feel three-dimensional, and I feel that here now. That perceptual brightness is actually really there. It makes a huge difference. So colorful. And again, no dynamic contrast is enabled. No need to enable any of that stuff. All the processing is disabled. Other than HGIG, by the way. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Beautiful. I wish I have beaten some of these games. Again, talk to any YouTuber. How much gaming do they actually do? Now, going into one of my favorite scenes of all time from Horizon Zero Dawn, the very beginning. This has seen, I've done Vizio, Quantum XP series, Z9G, all kinds of bright LEDs. And I'm leaving this free here so you can see how bright it actually is, how it pops. This scene is like my benchmark for LEDs typically, and OLEDs really couldn't ever make it look this bright until now. It looked amazing on last year's S95B from Samsung, but as far as OLEDs, only those two, uh, the G2, the S95, and now the G3 looked like this. I'll also tone it down in a minute to show you how I prefer it to look, but this is how it looks with the camera kind of free. As you are outside, look at that. My gosh. And again, no dimming. Nothing is dimming on me. You can see me here for minutes on end. Just nothing's happening to the image at full blast. Again, in HDR. Now, as I dim it down to make it look how I prefer it, you can see those specular highlights still, but the detail comes back because she is in shadow. Mind blowing. Really, really nice. Wow. Now, I really have no complaints with it. The menu system is great. Probably for me, the HGIG dynamic tone mapping toggle, I wish that was a little smaller in the corner, but I think you can actually customize that. We'll come back and we'll take a look at PC and the Xbox Series X as we look at Miles Morales at the end, which is a totally different looking Spider-Man, which looks so cool. The whole night scene and the golden looks amazing. I love these two games and how different they are, and they show the city in a different way. I love the way he swings, too. <laughs> Greatest American hero. All right, guys, I'm Brian at Brian's Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And again, special thank you to Robert and Wendy of Value Electronics. Check them out in the description again and tell them that I sent you. Look at that color. Oh, my God, it looks so good. So chill. I love how he's wearing the jacket. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I also have upcoming is a Sony A95K versus the G3. There's a short on the channel right now as a trailer. And I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate the community. I appreciate the friendship and all the support for all these years. 2023 has been an amazing year so far. 
And for me, the G3 is the first major release. I'll be seeing the S95C go against the G3 next week. It just wasn't in the store yet. But I know that QD OLED is incredible. Can't wait to see it go to head-to-head -head against the LG G3. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next. And we revisit on PC. We'll see some of the other features. We'll do more of a deep dive. And if you want, I'll do a picture settings video on the G3. But wasn't going to do that for our first time out here. All right, guys. Have a great day. Love you guys. Take care.